let's do a little role play. Let's say you're an engineer, you're an engineer, you're an engineer. Let's say 10 of you are engineers and you've all finally gotten your dream job at, I don't know, Microsoft or Apple. You've dreamt of this moment in your entire life and now you finally made that dream a reality. But seven months later, just like that, you quit. Why? Why is it that, according to Forbes, four out of 10 women in the engineering workforce leave, despite engineering and computer science jobs being the fastest growing and highest paying around the world? Why is that? It's a very big issue with simple solution. Gender discrimination and suppression. And when I'm talking about suppression, I'm talking about suppression. We've all been in this situation. We're randomly put into groups to work with other people we've never worked with before. And somehow, Everyone else in your group knows each other. They're chatting away and being like, hey, how's your day going? Oh, great, this assignment, I know. And you're kind of wondering, what are you supposed to be doing? And before you know it, they're all working on the assignment without you, and you're kind of just left there alone and sad. That's how women feel when they go into the engineering workforce. Okay, it's not as exaggerated, but you get the point. There's also gender discrimination. Gender discrimination has been a big issue for the world we're dealing with for quite some time. And it's been it's shown to be more prominent in careers that have been dominated by men for years, even centuries. Just look at the stereotypes. You have the typical housewife. Their main priority is to care for the house chores and attend to their kids. That's just a stereotype, right? But that's a whole other talk to begin with. I'm looking at women in the engineering workforce. If we can just show women around the world that tech spaces aren't just for men, not only could we have a more diversified, unbiased perspective in the engineering field, but we could also help girls and women break the stereotypes. The main issue revolves around the work environment. According to MIT, women tend to experience negative work dynamics, such as discrimination and low income during team-based projects, which makes the profession less appealing to them. And let me just add, a majority of women who enter the workforce have these high expectations where they want to make a big impact in society or the world, you know, these big ambitions of ours. But they, sh but because of this, they become disillusioned and they're faced with reality. But they shouldn't. They have the potential to achieve their dreams. And 20% of women receive undergraduate degrees, yet only 13% actually graduate and enter the workforce. And as of right now, only 24% of the engineering workforce in America consists of women. Only 24%. That's not a lot. And that number is declining, putting our society at a disadvantage. Having a majority of men making big decisions for us is like asking a group of boys to plan My Sweet 16. Think about that for a moment. No. Just look at my engineering class. As of this year, I enrolled myself into the engineering curriculum Calhoun provides. I'm in this great class called Foundations of Engineering, or FOE for short. And some of you have this expression on your face that's going, what's that class? I've never heard of that before. Don't worry, you're not the only one. But just look at my class. We have two classes for three whole grades. There's only 31 students enrolled. That's not a lot. And out of those 31 students, there's only seven girls. And compared to the last year's class, that's less than the amount of girls enrolled last year. We need more diversity, a broader pers perspective in the workforce. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, Bella, this sucks for us. What are we gonna do? Don't you worry, my imaginary friend, because here's your solution. If we can just introduce this field to girls during their early academic years, we can provide them with mentorship and support, and we can increase the chance of them graduating college undeterred by discrimination and inequality. Now, I'm not saying that we should just keep our mouths shut and push forward, no. What I'm trying to say is, band together. If we can get a majority of women, or just more women in general, into the workforce, we can prove our dedication, and we can go to employers or companies, and even court, so that perhaps in future generations, Women and men can be seen as equals in the workforce, regardless of gender. Thank you.